Hello everybody, my name is Ace. I'll be your narrator, honorary voice actor, and scared companion this evening. As we continue, Burroughs. Last time around, we managed to get to the... I forget the name of the of the, the saloon. It was like a saloon or like a tavern. And we met Takoda. Yeah, there we go. Takoda on the screen. Little cheat there. And um, he all of a sudden got um, <laughs> possessed by one of the participants or like higher powers that are that know about the game or are controlling the game and now they are being hunted down by allegedly i think it might be virgil i think virgil is hunting them down i'm not quite sure who exactly but it is scary uh, nevertheless that's all i seem to remember so let us continue it finally moves on Dakota's eyes follow something for another minute before he releases me. I pull free, gasping for air. What the fuck was that? He straightens his back and takes off his hat, looking at me softly for the first time since the personality switch. That is the enemy. The one I've been sent to protect you from. I didn't believe him at first, but something was definitely out there. Might as well see where this goes. After all, nothing is off the table as far as Virgil is concerned. Sent by who? That's classified. I immediately regret this decision. Just know that the US government is involved in studying this phenomenon, or this phenomena, and that involves protecting those who fall victim to it. Great. What is he? Some sort of secret agent? I'm a secret agent. Okay. Some sort of G-man? Of sorts. My exact title is... Yeah, yeah, classified. You realize keeping things from me would make it hard to trust you, right? I don't need your trust, Possum. Just your compliance. Okay, let's play along for now. Are you, or is Dakota going to be okay? He blinks a few times puzzled. The vessel? The person? You... I don't think you fully grasp what's at stake here. Then explain it. He furrows his brow. Fine. This place and everyone in it have been created by the thing you refer to as Virgil, as part of a game. Oh, we're getting lore. You followed the breadcrumbs through the Nexus, made contact with this world's anchor, and have been guided by Virgil to follow it. Is he talking about Ken, or... Wait, so Ken wasn't wrong after all? About all this being fake? Unless this guy's just telling me what I want to hear. Now, there's no way he could have guessed that much without some inside knowledge. I've been granted this vessel to safely extract you from this temporary anomaly without putting my real body in harm. So you're not actually here. Correct. My body is being held safely at a facility. Somewhere in another branch of time. Just when I was starting to believe him. I hate time travel stories. Whatever. Keep humoring him. There's gotta be some useful information buried under the nonsense. Are you a bird there, too? This feeling. That's what you're worried about? Christ, I'm too curious for your own good, Grayson. Gray. I have your file. It doesn't take a time-traveling secret agent to figure out that Gray is short for Grayson. No points for that. So what should I call you, then, if you're really not Dakota? You may call me Agent Leggett. Just agent, just agent is fine. What now? So you're saying Jesse and Colt aren't? Oh, they're not real. Enough dawdling, I'm taking you out of here. Ian? Not unless you explain this to the others. Who? Jesse? Colt, Ken, 
And this place is dangerous. You need to rescue them too. <laughs> what the fuck is so funny? My boy, that is impossible. Why? Answer me! It's out of my hands. Uh, this and then we have like the, the demon thing in our in us that's like talking trying to talk to this Ian guy. I remember him like the thing inside of us almost recognizing Ian in um Mark's route, right? And we're in a simulation. We know that. So Ken's become self aware basically. Ian, it's really you, but your soul has been. Please, Gray, I can't stand to watch. I can't stand to watch this happen again and again. This is the safest option, the only option. You really think I'd abandon my friends for some stranger who can't even show their face? You still don't understand. I understand plenty, and I'm not leaving their side until everyone can have a happy ending. You're a fool. Damn it. He grips my shoulder and squeezes hard. How I've missed your touch. If I'm a fool for wanting to save my friends, I'll gladly die as one. Die needlessly. You're more important than you realize. Even if what you're saying is true. I rest my head against my chest, or his chest. If this was your goal, you should have shown up sooner. Before I could meet them. I can't accept what you're telling me. I just can't. He sighs and rests his beak on my head. If only it was so simple. I feel warmth radiate from his body. The body he says, he's, says is stolen. Oh, it's that outline again from the dream. In my mind's eye, a different form emerges. It's blurry, but... You really are a bird, aren't you? Or you've always been a bird. It's... you? Oh, okay, the thing inside of us is, is gay for him. Let me kiss him. Please. I have to go now. I'm not going to give up, you know. I unlock the door and slip out of his grasp. Fine. But don't pretend to be Dakota next time we talk. I want to get to know him. The real him. He cackles under his breath as I walk away. <laughs> real. Ah, that's so much to process. Okay. Think. Okay, so that is another being that's helping us with the game. Behind Virgil's back, because obviously Virgil is... He's scared of Virgil. Or better yet, the entity. And we're in a simulation. None of the people are real. That's cool. Good to know. Um... And this thing inside of us, I, I can't tell if it's another person in us or if it's like gray subconscious or like repressed memories. Seems to know this Ian fellow, which apparently is this avian um, creature's name. And I'm lost. So I slam the door shut behind me. What the fuck was that? What? Who the fuck was that? Fragment. It happened again. Another half hour chunk of time I can't remember. I feel tired like I was walking a whole bunch. Shoes smelled like floor cleaner. No misplaced bullets this time at least. Oh, that's um, Dakota.
Does this Dakota have a split personality and actually believe everything he was saying? I rubbed my shoulder sore from where he grabbed me. Or maybe Ken was right about all of this being an illusion. The truth could lie somewhere in the middle. Ugh, damn it. Whatever it is, I don't have time for this. I power walked down the hallways, eager to get back to the main hall and find Ken. Turning a corner, I nearly bump into a hunched over figure. Ugh. Hey, watch it. Oh, hey, watch it. He's drunk out of his mind too. Colt? He's pissing into a mop bucket. Can a man take a leak in peace? I avert my gaze before it can come into view. You're drunk. <laughs> no way, I have a high tolerance. How much did you have? <laughs> uh, what comes after a Colt? He zips up his pants and stumbles over to me, almost slipping on a puddle. I reach out to grab him and he leans his dead weight across my chest. This fucking guy. Everything the agent told me is racing through my mind. Is all of this just a game? Am I risking everything to save people who don't really exist? Colt? Bro, it slumped out. I wouldn't risk it for all for anything less. Come on, buddy. I hold him up and we slouch back into the lobby, one inch at a time. Dragging him towards the bar, I gently place him back in his seat to rest in peace. All right, let's find this damned cat. I look out over the patrons towards the check-in desk, but it's empty. Dakota, or at least I hope it's Dakota, walks out from the kitchen a few minutes after me. All I can do is wave awkwardly. He gives me a warm smile, seemingly unaware of what just transpired. You better not put this guy in danger for, danger for my sake. Hey, uh, uh, Dakota, could you watch him for a little bit? I need to find someone. Sure thing, good luck. Yeah. It's unsettling how different the Asian persona was from Dakota's usual self. There's no way he could have faked that. No, I can't abandon him, I chose this path. Not spotting him in the crowd, I tried checking near the stairs leading to the rooms above. Ken? Ken? Fuck, quiet down, will ya? I whip around and see him lurking in a shadowy section under the stairs. Shit, I couldn't even see your eyes this time. Shh, come in here now. He grabs my arm and pulls me into the dark. Why does this keep happening? What the fuck is going on? He points over to the crowd, specifically to that dock person's table. That fucker is here. You know him? Yeah, he's fucked. He can't stay here. Elaborate. Look, just trust me. Oh no, not this again. I pull free from his grasp. What? I'm fucking sick and tired of not, never knowing what's going on around here. You either explain why he's bad and we leave, or we stay the night like we planned. Great, so where's our keys? Key. Pardon? He pinches his nose bridge in frustration. They only had one room available. Biggest one in the joint. And the most expensive. Shit. Grab the run and hurry upstairs. I'll be waiting. Room 6B. He checks around the corner before dashing up the steps, almost knocking a staff member over the edge. What a spaz. Hmm. If he won't get me any info, I'll eavesdrop and get my own. I spot a spare broom in the corner and grab it, pretending to sweep my way over to their table. It's not illegal to impersonate a custodian, right? Before I can even get that close, I hear their bickering. I'm just saying, you don't always have to, you don't always need to get dessert, Michelle. The woman sucks her teeth, tapping her fingers on the table. 
Just because the guy brings the little menus and asks if you want dessert doesn't mean you have to get it. I wanted it. Yeah, and I want to bang Mar- <laughs> Whoa! Marilyn, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna go out and do it. As if you had a- As if you'd have a chance. You're lucky I let you do anything with that gut hanging past you. He slams the table loud enough that a few pa other patrons gasp. You shut your damn mouth, woman. Everything you have is because of me. Who bought you that dress? Those pearls? He leans in, the table creaking under his weight. Bruh. Those tits. He chuckles manically, dragging a knife across a plate with an ear-splitting screech. <laughs> My beloved, this pussy bought me those things. She lifts her leg out of her heels and places a foot on his crotch under the table. Ho ho ho! And it has its eyes on a new Tiffany clutch I saw in Cosmo. Why you? So if you ever want to touch this body again, you'll behave while we're in public. She pulls her foot back just as a waiter comes with a slice of chocolate cake. Mmm, my favorite. Thanks, honey. That was a convo. The frazzled beaver grumbles incoherently as I decide I've had enough of their antics, slinking away towards the bar. What the fuck was that? They're dysfunctional, sure, but nothing evil. I can only hope Ken will eventually open up about it, but for now, I have a drunken Martin to secure. Hey, Colt. He waves weakly in my general direction. Ken got us a room. I'm gonna take you upstairs to sleep this off. We have a lot to talk about when Jesse gets back, okay? <laughs> Don't worry about the bill, it's been paid. Huh? By who? He winks, oh I see. <laughs> Alright then. It's been a pleasure serving y'all. I do hope we can chat again tomorrow, fellas. Me too, Dakota. Me too. I hook an arm under Colt and gently guides him, guide him towards the stairs. A placard shows that the four six suites are on the third floor. Well, of course they are. Huh? State your business. It's us. Us meaning... Open the door, jackass. I hear him undo every lock known to man before I tumble inside, exhausted from hauling Colt's surprisingly heavy body up two and a half flights of stairs. Damn, that kid is gone. I tolerance my ass. Help me get him into a bed, will ya? Just bring him to my room. We can decide who gets what when the old man gets back. Rooms? I thought this was... He shakes his head, gesturing to the immense size of the space. Turns out this suite is huge. There's a common room, a kitchen, and two private bedrooms. <laughs> Hot dog! Gray, you sound like a fucking idiot. That's a relief. Don't get too excited. There's still only one bed per room. Oh. I can sleep on this couch, then. Mm, we'll see. Now, come on. Let's lay him down before he goes limp on us. With Ken's help, we drag him into the room with ease, laying him down on a set of soft-looking flannel sheets. I'll get his shoes, you get the rest of it. <laughs> the fuck? Are we robbing him now? What? No. This is a nice place, you can't just wear your outside clothes on the bed. Let's at least get him down to his boxers. <laughs> the fuck are outside clothes? Are you helping or not? Ew, you do it. I ain't undress another dude. Of course not. You just pressure them to undress for you. What the fuck did you just say? Nothing. I'll handle him. Just do whatever it was you were doing. Fine by me. He slumps down at a writing desk and flips open a journal as I pull the last of Colt's socks off. <sighs> there we go. 
Now we can pull the covers over him. Nice and cozy. You gonna give him a goodnight kiss too? If he asked, probably. He mimics throwing up before going back to writing. Feeling the weight of the day hit me, I plopped down on the edge of the bed. We sit in silence for a while. I've never seen Ken more focused than when he's writing. Can I ask what you're... No. Figured. He rolls his eyes. It's, it's easier to organize my thoughts this way. When the thoughts are in my head, it's like a bunch of thoughts all piled on top of each other, you know? It takes a long time to write each one out, but once it's in the journal, it's not going anywhere. I nod. About the only useful thing Doc ever taught me. I see. I know, I know. We can talk about it another time. My brain's all over the place right now. It wouldn't go anywhere. All right, whenever you're feeling up to it, then. But you can't hide out in this room forever. <laughs> Watch me. Not everything is a dare, Christ. I fall back onto the bed, not able to resist the softness any longer. Fuck, I'm beat. I look over at Colt, who's already looking quite snug. Me too, pal. No. He shuffles closer to me, rubbing his head into my neck. Hey. I carefully put an arm around his waist, seeing how he'll react. He seems happy to comply, pressing his long torso against mine. He's so warm. Suddenly remembering whose room we're in, I snap my attention over to Ken, who's calmly scribbling away. Huh? What? You're not gonna say anything? He sighs, closing the book to give me his full attention. Look, I'm only gonna explain this once, so listen up. I'm not a queer. You clearly are. Uh-huh. Whatever you do with other people ain't none of my business. Just don't act that way towards me, and we're solid. That's surprisingly mature. I'm just saying how it is. Can't change who you are, no point in judging you for it. All I can control is what people try to do to me. Somehow he managed to add a thin veneer of homophobia to any otherwise sensible remark. I appreciate that, but we're just cuddling, nothing gay is happening. You don't just cuddle with your guy friends, man. That's reserved for your sweetheart. <laughs> what is this, high school? Adults tend to do whatever they want, at least those of us who are honest about who we are. Please. You think if I had more confidence, they suddenly want to snuggle up to you like a little kitten? No, just that you wouldn't care if someone thought you did. Like hell I wouldn't. I'm like people making shit up about me. At this point, I'm starting to question how many of the accusations against him are made up. Fine, that's fair. Then I'll continue to do my own thing over here. And there's a little like, up against his cheek and his little whiskers switch. Oh, soft. Just let me know if you get uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't care, man. You two are adorable. Carry on. Uh-huh. We get cozy under the covers. I keep a respectable barrier of sheets between Colt and I. Wouldn't want anything to be misconstrued by him in his inebriated state. Even if he's only tipsy, that's no excuse to get handsy. Good shit. Ken hums to himself as he writes, only stopping once to make some instant coffee in the kitchen. Cold is perfectly shaped for hugging. I could seriously fall asleep like this. Ken clears his throat to get my attention, and I blink away some sleepy tears. The otter's been gone a while. Mm-hmm. With our bikes. My bike. Uh-huh. I really hope he didn't have a change of heart and go to the cops. I don't know, maybe he'd stop to get food. Mm. Or met a cute girl. Fat chance. Why's that? <laughs> Please. Two guys on the road across the whole country. Alone with each other for weeks at a time. Sharing a bed. <laughs> They're clearly fags, too. I... Are any two men that spend time with each other faggots in your eyes? It's highly likely, yes. 
Going to the bar with a buddy? Date. That's a date. <laughs> Fishing trips? Gay orgies. They fuck the fish too. <laughs> what? Come on, really? Don't even get me started on sports teams. <sighs> you have a real messed up view of masculinity, pal. Whatever. I'm not the one taking it up the dick. <laughs> I don't think he's ever had sex. Period. What do you think the main difference between fucking men and women and fucking women are? Uh, well... Better question, what about gay sex is so disgusting to you? <laughs> that it's with a guy, obviously. Okay, so if one day your girlfriend magically grew a dick, you dump her. Bro. No one suck my girlfriend's dick easy. I give up. This guy has no idea who he is. And I'm not going to spend my whole night trying to crack the code to his sexuality. Alrighty. I'm going to take a nap and pretend this conversation never happened. Wake me up when Jess gets back. Okay, night, weirdo. Enjoy your stupid cuddles. <laughs> my eyes shut and I feel sleep take me instantly. The light in the room slowly dulling into a familiar black void. <laughs>